this light is super bright. 40,000 lumens with a new bulb. As it ages, it could be through between 32,000 and 35,000 lumens. These are pretty great. Short story, they really are pretty expensive, but there's not a whole lot of work lights on the market that put out this that much raw lumens. And the good news is it uses a transformer magnetic ballast, super reliable. You can get many years of service out of that. And the bulbs are $10 for cheap ones and $20 for premium Phillips or Sylvania. So that's a, a nice thing, getting 20,000 hours out of the bulbs. This will light up hundreds of square feet, It really, it, but it just doesn't have the best build quality. Some other reviews said it was American made. I'm not so sure if it qualifies for that. Uh, I couldn't see anywhere like on Amazon where it mentioned it was American made. And it does have, you know, the fans Chinese and the bulb sockets Chinese and the transformers actually using American materials, iron and copper, but it's made in Mexico. Anyway, let's get into the in-depth review and uh, take a look inside. Caddis Maximus here, this time with a review of the Wobble Light 400 Metal Halide. This is going to be not the best review. This is a big, old, huge 400 watt. Uh, they advertise this would be with a brand new bulb, 40,000 lumen, 360 degree work light. I can't even show you the whole thing because the whole thing is three feet tall. It has this big old base down here. It is a fiberglass base. And that's kind of the, one of the reasons I'm doing this review here is one, I found this at a home improvement secondhand store, like a Habitat for Humanity. In this case, it was a local one that's similar. And this was 20 bucks as is. They usually give you a week to return it. This was as is loose parts. And it sounds like the transformer is broken loose inside this unit. Uh, this one has seen a fair amount of abuse and use. It looks like maybe a painter or a drywall contractor, somebody along those lines owned this unit. So definitely all the big YouTube tool review channels have definitely done this light. Uh, and all their reviews are great, obviously. They're the big tool <laughs> review channels. <laughs> maybe not so much. I'm going to go a bit more into the details about the kind of the construction of it. Some of the other channels touched on it, but not particularly well. As well as talk about the advantages and disadvantages. This company comes with, has lights that are fluorescent, uh, halogen, LED, all different you know, light output levels for different price ranges. The LEDs are a lot more expensive. 20,000 LED lumen LED is like a $500 light on Amazon. This thing, the 400 watt metal halide is $300. And I should mention that these are hugely expensive, uh, but they are generally for the type of contractor who have multiple people working in an area. That's what they're designed for. That's why it puts out you know, they have such a big bulb in it because it puts out a huge amount of light. It's really crisp and it's just as good as having any kind of permanently installed uh, interior lights. Many times much better, much more effective than the uh, halogen lights because it's so bright that it can shine 360 degrees and still be as bright as you need it wherever you're working. And that's kind of the nice thing about it is you can move around. It has the, the amount of light output, the way it reflects. Uh, it just gives you huge amounts of illumination. It's really pretty awesome. This is as bright as a large parking lot light. And uh, if you had this outdoors at night for a barbecue or something, I mean, this would light up a huge area, hundreds of square feet. Anyway, three feet tall. This is a pretty big lens on it, about the size of somebody's head. It's kind of shaped like my head. That's why I don't uh, show my face. It it's some type of acrylic. It may be polycarbonate or something along those lines. Another review criticized this handle here because it is in it's one piece molded into the lens. It doesn't have any kind of real extra support. And on this lamp that's gotten beat up, there's a few cracks here. And that's the other point of this review is just kind of how does one of these really hold up. So these are also known as uh, pillar lights or buoy lights because that's kind of how they look. Like a, a buoy in the water a little bit. They use the transformer in the base. The base is a half circle. It's all rounded on the bottom. And then the weight of the transformer allows it to remain upright. They have a type of special mounting ring or plate. And we'll take a look at that inside here. And that's kind of what helps cushion the bulb uh, from when it gets knocked around. I will point out they've revised the new ones and put handles uh, down here on the sides of the unit. 
that's something you can easily improvise because there's two bolts there so you could easily improvise any number of handles to put through there and it's probably what I'd recommend and the lower part is looks like you know a fiberglass composite this this the type of stuff that you'd find on boats or maybe automotive fenders this is not fiberglass reinforced nylon or polycarbonate it's a pretty good chassis but this is not the type of thing that would take being thrown out of the back of a pickup truck it would smash it in those types of situations so it's not as heavy duty as say a cordless tool but definitely reasonable for a work light and using in gravel and all that kind of thing and the kind of the big deal about these is they are so big they have been for a few years really the biggest and brightest absolute work lights you can get without having you know the little trailer mounted ones or all sorts of really heavy duty work lights but this is definitely kind of work light is more than bright enough to setting out in the yard you could easily put on siding on a house at night uh, with a light like this and so that's what's kind of neat about it even though it is just so bulky and massive anyway I'm gonna open this up this is partially just a, a review and then partially me trying to take a look at what's going on with the transformer that seems to be loose there's something lo big loose in the bottom and that's where the transformer is the, because this has been a job site use one something did break so we'll get a view of that and I'll talk a little bit about uh, the halide bulb here the halide bulb is a good option they're actually very efficient uh, easily as good as LEDs really it's more about lifetime the light that comes off a of halide is really nice it really is a crisp light we're gonna uh, pull off the lens here the upper part of these it's a clamshell and the upper part is held on by the lens here so the halides are really are pretty efficient light bulb it's really surprising uh, this 400 watt is probably easily over a hundred lumens a watt which is what most LEDs do many of the L they make LED bulbs that will are compatible with the ballast but they're only like half the output a 400 watt equivalent is only 20,000 lumens when a really high quality uh, halide bulb will be 35,000 lumens for most of its life. They're quoting 40,000 on the website for this, but that would be in the first 5 to 10% of the life of the bulb. And still, 20,000 hours is pretty great, and you can find these bulbs for 10 to 20 bucks online. These are a fan-cooled light, so it sucks in air through ga uh, vents in the bottom, blows it up through the cavity, hits this top cap. There's actually a gap around here at the top. If you could, oh, you're positioned for me to take this off. Anyway, there's a gap around the top, and it blows air out that way. And it really, right next to the bulb here, it gets kind of warm, but it's really not so bad. The rest of this stays surprisingly cool. And so we'll just work that off, pull it off pretty gently. And there's our bulb. Yeah, this lens is pretty broken up around the handle. The best bet would be to put two handles, one on each side of the neck there, and then actually just saw off this handle so you're not temp so it doesn't go on to damage and break this. The other issue is the way they molded it, they didn't do anything to attempt to close in the bottom. This handle has all these corrugations, but they're really thin. And this thing weighs 35 pounds. And if you actually had to carry this any distance around a job site or something, uh, the way it bites in your fingers is actually pretty uncomfortable. But once again, newer ones have different handle setups, but there's still tons of these first generation style ones because they are so expensive. These lights are advertised as being American made, and to do that you need to have at least 50% of the, I don't know if it's the bulk or the value, how exactly it works, but 50% of something of the product. Uh, is how you get to say it's American made or whatever country it's really made in and this says it's American made but we'll see you know what parts they did you know made from global components we do have an echo EIKO bulb in there it seems to be just fine it's a uh, of course a 400 watt we know it's a pulse start because there's a resistor inside this bulb you always want to be real careful with these bulbs due to the fact that they always tell you to be real careful about getting any kind of finger oils. You always want to use a rag or something. And the big deal is, is a tiny amount of, a little bit of, you know, dry hand finger oil isn't a big deal. It's the fact that if you have some kind of glob of a little bit of grease or pizza grease or, you know, anything like that, the grease itself isn't what causes the issue with the bulb kind of exploding. Actually, it does two things. This outer envelope is a vacuum and then the inner bulb runs at the high pressure. 
but it's the fact that the oil, all the radiation, the thermal radiation coming off of this, the infrared will get concentrated on that fingerprint or that grease smudge and cause a localized superheating of the glass. And that part of the glass will over expand more than the rest of the globe. And that's what causes the failure. So generally speaking, you'd want to have some kind of a bulb. What is that? There's some dust on this bulb. You know, having the through fan seems to be fine. So you don't need to over tighten these. This one's almost too tight. They need to get pretty tight, but not super duper tight this one was just a little bit ridiculous um just because it's a big socket doesn't actually mean that you have to wrench down on it and that's all this is is a big threaded uh light bulb socket this one just happens see the size of my thumb happens to be about a one and a quarter inch i think it's an edison 39. sometimes this can happen as well i just detected this on the bulb where the base does have a crack in the metal you got to be so one of the reasons you don't torque them too much um just because it reduces additional strain, although that is a bit disappointing. Only, you know, a quality Sylvania or Phillips, never seen something like that. In here we have our big socket. So this is a two kilovolt, two, kilo, a two kilowatt, 2000 watt uh, rated five kilovolt or uh, pulse rated socket. So this is a standard type of socket. It's mounted through screws that go through the inside and then it has a big ceramic exterior. Since this is fan cool that uses, you know, it seems like it's a nylon web here. This is their bulb protection so when it gets knocked hard then the bulb kind of flexes in the plastic. I can tell you that this is pretty rigid. It could be, a, you know, a bit more flexy. Give a, a little bit more give for the bulb. Fortunately in this situation you know, if this wasn't working out for you, you could get in here and just cut out like every other one of the veins here. And uh, that would allow it to loosen up and still hold it quite securely. It's cut out like this so all the air can come up and around. So it comes up all the way around the bulb and the housing and then shoots out the top. So it's really a pretty decent design. We can somebody, somebody was trying to fix it before and thought they lost something, put in a nut right here with some double-sided tape. And the fact is, the lens only actually has five holes there is no hole for this position as this housing has is used for multiple different lights and some may use that six hole we can see fortunately the screws aren't going right into the plastic it's it is uh metal inserts there or threaded clips pretty thin chassis you know that's the way it works with fiberglass this is pretty heavy duty for being picked up and set down but once again you know it's just not going to be bouncing off the concrete Forgot to mention how you plug it in is there's just a plug on the front here where you just plug an extension cord into it. It actually has a pass-through. It's advertised for 12 amp pass-through because this thing uses 3 amps. And it has a circuit breaker and a flip switch on the front. Uh, the circuit breaker is 12 amps. It's held together with 5 screws. They do use uh, metal nuts that are inserted into the plastic. But since it's through hole, even if that ever broke out, you could run like big bolts with big washers just right over the top. So I'm going to get these two clamshells apart. Okay, I got the fasteners out. They use these socket head cap screws and then they actually have the shape of a nut molded into the bottom of the plastic holes on the back side. And these go through and then thread in there. Somebody's been in here before. Th fastener missing on the bottom. The middle one, it was actually <laughs> cross-threaded and then they had torqued it to the point where it stripped out the plastic. A little trick you can do is take a couple of slot head screwdrivers and push them down, the right size ones of course. Since the plastic stripped out, you can push them down to kind of put pressure on each of the flats. In that case, it worked. I'm actually going to upgrade this since this, they didn't even have washers or maybe there were washers and they lost them. Um, I'm going to replace the fasteners with these washer head, grade 8 washer head bolts just to uh, provide a little extra support. Let's split this apart. So this has definitely seen some work. And you know, overall, I mean, it's not busted in half, even though it had uh, a few stripped out parts. It really has seemed to hold up well. And I paid a good price, even if I had to put some labor into it. So we got it apart, the two clamshells. It is all quarter inch 20 fasteners, surprisingly enough. So all fractional fasteners, not metric in this. Let's see if we can't get this to uh, cooperate here and want to come apart. Why is it so stuck? There's some kind of, there we go. Binding happening here. Really wants to roll up straight. It's actually quite interesting. I'm trying to get everything to stay in one half. 
almost except for this outlet here. I don't know if we can get a good look in there. Let's move this around so you can get a look. It, it, this has definitely been outside, left outside. It is rusty on the bottom. So it isn't just the transformer or the transformer is mounted to a big metal plate here. Let me readjust. Okay, we finally got this dealt with. Really kind of interesting. So they use both the transformer as well as some like half inch thick steel plates. Uh, just cast iron plates really. And with those cast iron plates they have like this little rack here and it has a flange it's kind of hard to deal with because it really wants to stand up especially when there's only one half on and then the transformer is kind of captured by this flange on the bottom and it's sliding back and forth the bottom hole the bottom there's a screw in the bottom or a bolt and the two plastic pegs that go through the transformer is kind of sliding back and forth on so that was the noise at least it actually hadn't broken loose but at least it's something to know that you are going to develop rust inside if it's ever left outside. And I realized the camera just now was focusing on the flashlight rather than what I was trying to point out. We have our igniter. There's actually a distribution board which has a date of 2011. So they've had this around for a while. It is a Chinese uh, ball bearing 120 volt fan. What's interesting is that it's a round style instead of a square style to fit in the neck. And decent 14 gauge wiring. There actually is quality wiring inside this. So the wiring in here is pretty decent. It's uh, actually known as machine tool grade wire or conduit wire. It's oil and gas resistant, 600 volts, 105 degrees Celsius rated. So really, it, they are using good wire. 16 gauge wire and some of the, like the, just a the power switch only has the light bulb going through it. The through pass for the sockets, or they're just wired directly into each other. Except for there is that circuit breaker that's in between. They have a, besides power distribution board, it's a pretty simple and straightforward unit. Anyway, I think this video has probably gone on a little bit too long already. But I wanted to show inside these lights since the big review sites did them. And this is kind of how one uh, would look like after it's been well used. And it seems they've actually held up pretty well. There's some dust buildup, but it's not so bad. Maybe not the best components, but you can basically replace everything that's inside here. The whole ballast and socket, all the fan all that can be easily replaced so at least you can hold on to it for a long time that's including the ballast transformers those are all pretty standardized this one's made in mexico assembled with u.s components I've, it's always been made in usa with global components but this is made in mexico with american components so kind of an odd uh, reversal rolls you would basically, and I thought about it for a minute, pause the video, need to make like pieces of wood or maybe UHMW plastic. I was thinking this thing's so heavy and so much of it's this, these pieces of steel. And really with the transformer, uh, it would still ride itself just fine. Really, I think it would be just fine. And then the thing wouldn't weigh like 30, it wouldn't weigh so much. And I don't think it needs quite that much weight to really have a good riding effect. And then it would just be a lot easier to carry around. Anyway, I'm going to end this review of this Wobble Light 400 uh, Halide. It's been kind of a weird rambling review, but it's always nice to have just a more detailed discussion every once in a while. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody watching and who has subscribed. And if you haven't subscribed, please do support the Caddis Maximus channel and subscribe. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out. Anyway, to sum it up, I had an issue and a screw inside the socket had broke for the center contact. And so that's probably how I ended up uh, at a, a reuse store in the first place and under as is because the product worked and then didn't work. I wish I had more fasteners. It does flex. There's an Amazon review where the guy really didn't like it. And it does flex around, but it's, it's not too bad. Overall, I think, I mean, you know, for the, what I paid, it's awesome. I think for people who actually need to run a crew or really want to light up a larger area, it's kind of hard to beat these, especially with the paths through and how you can daisy chain them, run them off of inverters to light up like a big campsite, you know, if you have a couple of families or a bunch of friends, all that kind of stuff, real hard to find these or to really beat these, to tell you the truth, especially being able to run them off of inverters or the small little one kilowatt generators. And the lens gets pretty hot, I'd say about 120 degrees, but the fan does do a pretty decent job. And overall, the halide 
and the magnetic ballasts are very proven, super reliable. Uh, I think with the LED ones, they're pretty good, but who knows, five or ten years of use. You know, I buy a lot of LED bulbs for my house, and I've had a hit or miss kind of thing with the power supplies going out. So I really like that it's a magnetic. Anyway, until next time, Caddis Maximus out.